Round 9 trades. It's been a pretty interesting week here. We've got five trades between the three teams. So we've got the head-to-head -head team to start us off. And I battled with a couple of different things. I was going to bring Adam Elliott in and then decided against it. I don't need him for round 13 cover, for example. We're not exactly sure how his role is going to go yeah, going to be going forward. And I decided to bring in one of the cash cows this week, which I think has a decent opportunity to make some cash over, you know, make some money over the next bunch of weeks. We, you know, he's... Who he's up against, Tane Milne. Uh, he was in the reserves after his suspension, so Tass, you know, has earned his spot. Uh, so Milne's going to play for Mansour, but you know, I think uh, Tass has uh, you know, earned that spot, and we're going to plug him into our team and, and play him tonight. I'm going to play him over you know, Cola and also Ilias. I think that's, you know, a decent one in here just to, you know, try and push for that few extra points. I think he can get that 20-odd that um, you know, Ilias or, you know, the 20-30 that Ilias is going to average and has a little bit more upside than these guys. So I'm going to plug him in and and play him this week which is really really cool and the other option was to to bring in jackson hastings so traded out kobe hetherington this week so he's gonskis and also brady jones so those two i just decided to go you know two mid rangers down to a cashy that i think could make you know a fair bit over the next bunch of weeks get into the 400s i'd say over the next sort of month or so and then hastings could come in and and be someone that can make you know 100 or so thousand for us be a little bit of a cut price keeper that we could use over you know majority of the season but with um you know 23 trades left after these two i feel like i'm in a good position heading into the origin period and as a head-to-head -head player in this one I, I think making money in this little section here is going to be pretty important you know jones's role unfortunately you know looks like it's going to be almost closed we've got barnett who's going to be back in the next few weeks as well uh fitzy's there we've got frizzell so there's plenty of um Plenty of edge cover there, and we need him to be starting to make some cash. So I don't think I think he's lost that now with Fitzgibbon coming back that little bit early, a little bit earlier than we thought, um, and that's that here. We can't use Hass as a loop this week, guys. Just be aware of that. He plays the first game, unfortunately. So back to normal, uh, the Thursday Friday night games for uh, for the for the Broncos there. So this is where the team's at. We have got Hastings and Hunt starting. We're still without Cleary, but we're going to captain Nico Hines this week. I think he's you know the second best option behind uh behind cleary this week so he's coming up against the warriors and i think he can you know plug plug himself somewhere into a mid 60s and has an opportunity to really dominate that game against the warriors uh so i think Hines is the man for the captaincy this week so the team looks pretty solid but obviously you know the guys that we aren't too super keen on probably like a maxi king uh his score and and maybe like a a TAS would probably be the only real worries i think schneider's gonna be fine this week against the dogs you know a bit of a closer game and he's gonna be the main half in this one so Team's looking solid, 23 trades left, uh, doing well in our head-to-head -head leagues. I think just making money and building for later on the year for my team who's been winning most of their games. Obviously been ranked pretty high as well, so that's that. All right, the people score. We made one trade this week, and we had 250k in the bank, so we managed to go from Brody Jones to Josh Jackson, and, and that was the consensus. It was Josh Jackson, then Tamalolo was the, the second best option there. Everyone wanted one trade, which is completely fair. Uh, won't be able to loop this week, so we're going to have to decide between... Uh, whether it's Ilias, whether it's Taff, however you want to play that one, um, you know, whether you want to play Taff over Cola, uh, for example, up to everyone. So just jump in there. I'll, I'll fix this around. Uh, but I was thinking Ilias was my potential one. That's why I had him at number five to loop anyway, uh, before I realized that they were actually playing the Broncos. So that's that. Uh, people scored, yeah, one trade. We've got the cover now in the, in the mids, which is good with, uh, with Jackson there. In terms of the rest of the starting side, obviously, you know, Grant, being in there is great. Still and Brown, hopefully hoping for a better score this week. The only issue is that just playing, you know, Cola and and Ilias, and that's what can happen when we've got that bunch of cheapies. So obviously really strong in the rest of the squad with with Grant there, probably the the Cleary, Brown, Josh Jackson, uh, Payne Haas. Obviously plenty of big big time options uh, across the park. So yeah, this is the only thing that's really you know hitting us hard at the moment. Is just a real cheapies, the Violea, the Moale. Uh, and Taff not going so well, it's just we've made a couple of average decisions, which has left us in this position to have, you know, players 16 and 17, and if Haas is playing, you know, probably just the 16 players that are good, and then the one that's not so good, but still ranked great. Plenty of trades in the bank heading into the origin period, so I think we're going to be fine. I'm glad we're only using one this week, and I think we're set up really well. Let me know what you guys' are thoughts are on this one. Drop them in the comments or in the Discord group in the people's team chat, and we'll, we'll work out who to play uh, for this. Obviously, I'm doing this video... Wednesday night for you guys, so pretty early uh, in the piece. So we've got a bit of time to sort this out. So that's the People Squad's trades there. We're going to move on to my team now. And, and the two trades we've gone for is Kurt Man out and also Brody Jones. So, yeah, as I spoke about Brody before, I think it's time, unfortunately. Yeah, he's been making good cash. Thankfully, 123k for him. 
Uh, Mans made good good money as well. Um, so trading both them out, roles in their team, not sure. And also, obviously, the injury. I need some mid-cover. So Mans, the guy to go, uh, having peaked in price as well. So the only options I had in the mids, for example, uh, I needed two mids this week with Kurt Mann and also Payne Hass out. So I needed to get two in. Elliot was obviously the cheaper one. I flirted with the idea of Alex Seifar, who is going to be is a mid, but is going to be playing on the edge for Lucy Lua. Sounds like it might be a couple of week injury. He looked like he wanted to play on, so I'm assuming it's going to be less, you know, a normal hamstring strain somewhere between two to four weeks. Uh, so considering he tried to continue playing, it's probably going to be on the lighter scale, so probably two weeks. I don't know if that's enough. Like Seifar's going to score well and make money over those two weeks, but Elliot's job security, hopefully, is a little bit uh a little bit higher than what it is for, for Seifarth. So that was the potential options. Um, if I went for Seifarth, I'd be able to go up a little bit higher into the Josh Jacksons, for example, but this is where we're at. Elliot comes in and Cotter. It was either Cotter or Crichton. Uh, Cotter, Crichton, or McInnes. So went for Cotter. He plays around 13. I think that helps us out there uh, heading into heading into that section there. So we'll jump into the team now after making those trades and show you where we're at. So the 21 remaining is a little bit uh, not ideal for us, but considering the rank has been dropping back, we've you know we played with 16 last week. Uh, been a few issues in this side. I think this is the week we had to really push and try and uh, try and get back. And building towards round 13 is, is really nice as well. So I've got a bunch of Raiders players who play in 13. Obviously got you know Cotton now after you know, trading out Nanaya a few you know, a couple of weeks ago. But this is where we're at. So we're hoping for a big score from Talakai Brown, uh, who both had. You know, crap ones last week. We got Schneider, hoping for a big one from him. Cotter, a decent one. You know, Elliot, somewhere around that 40 mark would be ideal. And in terms of the rest of the guys, you know, another big one from Cleary would be good. And you know, some continued money making from the rest of the guys on my interchange. So that's probably the biggest, you know, the best thing at the moment for my side is that I haven't got too many guys that aren't making cash. So we either got keepers or we had, you know, Kurt Mann was out, but he's already made a decent amount of cash for us. And you've got uh, pretty much everyone else in the team that's that's doing really well and making making money. You know, he brought in Cola last week and, and he's made a little bit and he'll continue to do so. If he averages that high 20s, if he can get a sneaky 30 or 40 in there, he'll make some uh, even more cash there. We'll continue to play Penasini, even though this is probably a tough one this week against Panthers. I could play Ilias, for example, but I think we just, you know, he's been consistent, you know, making big meters now and they're giving him plenty of balls. So I think that, you know, if he can sneak over for a try, it's a pretty good game, you know, both, you know, back and forth. I think um, that would be a decent one, but in terms of origin, that's probably you know a quick thing to, to have a have a think about. If we we could just sneak all the way to to round thirteen, just up here, just to make it easy for everyone to follow along on the same screen. So, all right, round thirteen. So we have four games: the Titans, the Cowboys, Panthers, Dogs, Manly, Warriors and Raiders and the Roosters. So we look at Titans, guys, I have zero, which is not ideal. Cowboys, guys, I have the one. All right, so everyone just have a bit of a play uh, around with this and, and work out how many plays you've got going into the first buy round. So we've got Panthers v the Dogs, and I have Maxi King. If we hold, so that make two. And the Panthers side of the ball, I have Tungo, Crichton, and May, so that gives us five. Cleary will be in origin, so that won't help us out there. All right, so five so far up against the Dogs. We spoke about that. Manly up against Warriors. So on the Warriors side, I have Aiken. On Manly side, I have Cola. And anyone else? That is all. So seven so far. And then we move to the Raiders v. the Roosters. So currently in the Roosters side, I have none. And on the Raiders side, I have three. So currently 10 players that will be playing coming into round 13, which is pretty solid. And a few people are starting to ask me now, the right amount of players. I think 12 is going to be the, the correct amount if you've got majority guns. So if you've got a lot of really good players, then awesome. If you've got, got a lot of guys like Kohler, um, yeah, who else are the cheapies in there? Uh, Tulpa Lotu, these types of guys that aren't guns, whether you've got an outside back for a Cowboys team. Um, what else have you got? Obviously all the outside backs for the Panthers and stuff. If you, if you have a lot of guns, then great, then 12 you could get away with. If you have a, a mixture of guns and, and a bunch of like cheap guys, the 280s, 300Ks, 350s that aren't going to score incredibly, then I think closer to like 14, 15 would be ideal. If you went for 17 in round in round 13, that gives you round 14, 15, 16, and 17 to make a lot of trades You know, when you only have four, potentially, maybe less, two to four that are playing in round 17. If you had a full 17 in round... Um, Around 13, so it's a lot of 17s. Um, 
then you'd have to trade so much to even get close to like a 10, 12, 14 in that round 17. So mixing it between 12 to 15 in both would be ideal. Obviously, we have a lot of, we, we can use a lot of trades during that period, but if you are doing that, you'll run out completely by the end. I understand you get you know four extra trades near the end of the, you know, just after the buy rounds, but it would be too much, especially if you've used a fair few trades now, like my team, I've been double trading the last bunch of weeks, which is killing me. Um, that's kind of the theory on trading up to that period and, and getting sort of 12 to 15 guys that are gonna do well, but have being able to match that in 17 as well. There's no point catching up a heap of ranks in 13 and then losing all of them in 17. So mixing both together will be great. Keeping a few trades in the bank for creating your final 17 after, you know, in round 18, 19, 20, and then you get that extra four for some injuries and stuff like that, then you'll be sweet. So that's the theory on trades coming into that period. They're the trades for our week. I wish you all the best of luck heading into round nine and that lockout. And we'll catch you in the next few video, guys. Like and subscribe. We'll see you then.